Hello, um, I'm just going to give you a quick introduction now to GraphPad Prism. Um, this is version 5.04 of Prism, which is the latest version 5 um, release. There's now a version 6 about. Um, this is a commercial piece of software designed to do publication quality graphs, so graphs for papers, reports, um, PhD theses, etc. Um, it is quite expensive. I think it's about three or four hundred dollars to purchase the application. Um, you can download a free demo from www.graphpad.com and that will allow you to use the software um, in its current version for I think 29 30 days um, and you can save, you can copy, you can paste, you can do all the functions you can do in this uh, full version but after 30 days um, the license expires and you can no longer use it without purchasing it so if you need it for a short period to complete a report go for it, download it, use it, um, if you intend to use it long term I would suggest you invest in it. It's an amazing program for doing graphs. and I'm just going to skim over the surface of some of the basic graphs today. Um, when you start loading Prism, as you can see here, you've got some tutorials. There's a brief tour. It is very brief. It doesn't say too much about some of the finer points of Prism. Um, it does give you some basics. Um, the quality is OK. Um, but you can you can watch that if you want to. Um, what I'd normally do though first is go and, and decide on what you want to create, what graph you want to create, and then get stuck in. So I'm going to create um, a column graph because uh, it's the simplest way of creating a graph. And I'm just going to suppose I've got three sets of data, um, a control group and two treated groups um, with an N of six um, from an experiment I've done in cell culture in the lab. I'm going to make up the numbers just for the purpose of this demonstration, but let's just uh, assume I've got that. So I look at the graph and I look at how I want to um, express my data. It's a very simple thing. It's very much like the um, graph choosing application within Excel. You basically do it by pictures, and to be honest, that's a very simple way of doing it. So we look in here and we go, right, I want a bar graph, so I'm going to click on that one. I want it to go vertical, so I'm going to choose that one and not that one. Um, if I wanted to scatter plot or a box and whiskers, I could choose the correct ones. So I can click on bar graph, and down here it says plot mean with standard error of the mean, mean with standard deviation, geometric mean, etc., etc. I'm going to choose mean with standard deviation, but you can go back and change this, and we'll do this later. So I'm going to press create. After a few seconds, it brings up a spreadsheet, and this spreadsheet is where you want to. Um, put your data. In this case we are doing, as I said, a column graph, so a graph based around columns of numbers. So we've got a series of columns A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Each of these is labeled with a Y, and this Y means these are the Y axes data. Okay, there are no X axes listed here, if you can scroll all the way across and way back again, there are no X axes markers, because we are going to be plotting all of these data mean all of these data mean and all of these data mean as our three separate groups. So for A, I'm going to type in control. For B, I'm going to type in group A. And for C, group B. So these are my control conditions, my group A conditions, my treatment A, and my treatment B. And then we enter the numbers. So I'm just going to enter some, some random numbers. N of 6. This could be densitometry, it could be a re reaction to a to an experimental condition. And then group A, I'm going to enter the numbers where the uh, data are recorded here. And then finally group B. And we've got three sets of data, control, group A, and group B. The great thing about PRISM is that it automatically creates graphs as you go along. So we've got data one here, and I'm going to relabel this by just clicking on it, and I'm going to say this is culture experiment, so experiment one. Immediately down here, it's got graph experiment one. Click on this, and it's plotted a graph for us. It's experiment one. The Y has a Y-axis and an X-axis, and it's got control, group A, and group B. And group A and group B and control have been taken from the titles of our groups here. You can do a lot of things with this graph, and I'm going to quickly make it into something that looks a little bit more palatable. Um, by default, Prism chooses these fairly grotesque fill styles, um, so I'm going to do a little bit of uh, playing now. So first we're going to label our X and Y axes. So this is going to be treatment, and up the uh, Y axis I'm just going to call it result. 
in units. And there we are. So now we've got our results and our treatment group. If you double click on anything in PRISM, you can change the way it looks, the way it behaves. So I'm going to double click on this X axis here. And it's bringing up a dialog box. And the dialog box is, again, a fairly self explanatory in PRISM. I'm looking at the format axes box. And you can see here it's automatically determined the range. I've got options between ticks going up, ticks going down, tick length, short, long, very long, etc. And over here I've got the location of numbering. At the moment it says below angled. There we are, it's angled. I don't like angled, so I'm going to get rid of that and make it horizontal and press OK. And now it's showing group A, group A and group B and control horizontal, which looks a lot nicer. You can see the cursor here changes as I move my mouse over the um, graph. In certain places you get this double-ended um, cursor and that enables you to move things around. See, I can move treatment by dragging on it. I can click and hold here. I can move the x-axis labels. I can move the y-axis labels. So it's very flexible and it tends to keep things nicely aligned unlike Excel and other graph programs that seem to put boxes around these words and you can drag them left, right and center. It keeps them nicely aligned center and you can just move things around, space things so nice and easy. Um, most graphs don't need a title. You're going to have a legend so I'm going to get rid of that and leave that without experiment one written there, that's not really useful. And now I want to change the fill styles of these graphs, so I double click on the control and I'm going to use a new dialog box, this is called Format Graph. This allows us to choose the appearance of various graph um, parts. Um, it's got the three different data sets or you can change all the data sets. Um, so you can choose control, you can say whether it wants to appear as a bar, symbols, box and whiskers, and this is where you can change individual data sets to look differently. So for instance, just for no reason at all, I'm going to choose control to be a scatter plot. Click OK, and now the control is shown as a scatter plot, whereas group A and group B are shown as bar graphs with error bars. So let's go back and put that back as a bar again. And now you can choose the fills, you can choose whether it's mean or standard deviation. So for control, I'm going to make these white. For group A, I'm going to make them not filled, but I'm going to give them a slight grey colour. Group B, again, not filled, but I'm going to make them a black colour. So now I've got three sets of data with incremental shaded fills, um, which kind of uh, detracts from the data, but also gives you a little little kind of a hint that it's getting bigger. Um, again, we've got error bars here that are going up at the moment. I may want the error bars going up and down. So if I double click on it, down the bottom here you've got error bars. I can click on all data sets and choose the error bars to go above and below, or both. So there we are. And now I've got error bars going above and below. Um, I think these bar bars look very thick to me and the borders of these lines look quite thick and chunky. For only three bars it's a bit in your face. So again we can double click here and the last option here is down. We've got bars and fills and we chose the pattern and we also left the borders the same so we can go up to here, all data sets, choose borders to be one point and also change our error bars to be one point. And now we've got a graph that looks a little bit nicer. Um, and there we are, first graph. So we're going to come back to this uh, in the next tutorial and do another graph and then start combining things.